Hi everyone. Today we're looking at using speech recognition in FXGL in Java. So we're going to build a simple application that has um, speech input, which you can then utilize for anything you want. And that will be using the latest FXGL version, which is 21.1. .1. If you've not used, um, if you haven't built a JarFX application with Maven before, then you probably should look at a different tutorial. Once you're happy how to build JarFX applications using um, Maven, then you can come back. Uh, and this is the, um, these are the dependencies that you'll need for this project. One is the usual FXGL. Um, then you need the version, which is 21.1. .1. Um, and from now on, we also have a separate module called FXGL Intelligence, which brings those um, AI um, features. So now that that's sorted, uh, we can start building a simple application. I suppose to this tutorial, there will be two parts. One is to just literally how to get speech recognition working. And after that, you can pretty much go away and do something else if you already are happy with that. And um, the second part of the tutorial is going to be just kind of um, a simple game example, which actually makes use of speech recognition. Also, um, just as a reminder, you will need to have either Chrome or Firefox installed um, in their respective default locations. One of them is fine um, because speech recognition uses web API through those um, browsers. Right, so, well, the most important thing here, apart from all of this kind of boilerplate, is you need to add engine service um, speech recognition service dot class this is the service that will be used for the actual recognition stuff once you've added the service in the settings you can get access to it um, anywhere in fxgl uh, and specifically we want it inside game um, initialization most of the kind of AI services will have a dot start function so that you can start the associated service. But before we do that, um, there are usually some kind of callbacks that will be associated with whatever it is that you're doing. For this one, um, we have a by consumer callback, which is the string input, which is what you said, and um, double confidence, which is what the AI thinks, um, well, I suppose not necessarily AI, but what the service um, thinks the confidence level is for that specific um, speech sample, I guess. Um, but it's not something that we should be worried about at this point. We just print whatever it is that we have as input to the terminal. <clears throat> So this is the minimal application that you'll need effectively. So if you're happy with that, um, let's just quickly test this. One, well, it actually needs to boot the API thing. But once it's ready, it should be able to pick up whatever it is that um, I'm going to be saying and print to the terminal. Hello. Hello world. Yeah, it seems to be doing its own thing, so it's good. Uh, and that's effectively it. That This is the minimal application that you'll need. So you can start utilizing speech recognition in your applications, whether JavaFX or FXGL. Um, okay, so what kind of a game are we going to be building? Mm. Suppose we have a few entities on the screen and we're able to control them with um, speech. I think that will be a nice example. We need, what do we need? Um, I think we need a map of entities so that we can kind of get them. 
So shall we use something like string to, um, I'm thinking multiple entities, different types of color, so that you can actually kind of recognize the entities on the screen. In which case, if we map the name of the color to the color object, these are the colors. And then, um, we need to actually populate this, right? So let's do something like this. Yellow color, yellow, green, color green, uh, blue, color blue, and finally red. Four entities is probably sufficient, right? Mm, what else do we need? Um, we need a Spawn method, some kind. Um, spawn MC uh, string nip color color. Once we've started the service, let's spawn a bunch of entities here. Colors for each. Um, first thing is the name of the color, and then this is the color object. On and C color. And the spawning is going to be um, at the center of the screen ish. Um, it's not going to be exact center because of bounding blocks, but that's fine. It's not the point of this tutorial. Why is it? Ooh, rookie mistake. Make sure you import the right things. So we've got an entity. Um, let's attach the view of it, 40 by 40, and then use the color. So now that we've got this, um, it needs to have... <clears throat> Just to have some kind of component to control it, projectile component. It needs a direction, uh, direction of one zero by default, so it moves to the right, um, and speed something like two fifty. We can use. I'm thinking if if it continues moving indefinitely, it will just go off screen, which is not something we want. So view with the bounding box. So it generates bounding box based on the view. And then we can attach something like um, keep on screen component, which should um, use the bounding box and then not move the NC beyond the screen. Okay, let's just, okay, let's not do that and then just quickly test that this thing works. I should spawn four entities, um, all of which are spawned one on top of the other. And they stay on screen, which is good. Okay, so we've spawned the entities. Using these values, um, we can obtain these from speech. How can we get the entities from that? We need another man. Of string to entity. Yeah. And then we'll just populate it. Yeah, that's right. So this is entity, and then we just use entities, put um, name of the color, and then the entity object. So what we need to do now is enable speech. This is the input that we get. Um, can we can we handle it separately? Handle inputs and just create a new method out of it. And then in here, we're going to get the entity based on color. 
Right, so we need to pass the input now. Because this isn't just going to be one word, it's the entire string. Um, tokens, input split by um, space. Shall we trim it first, just to make sure? Um, trim and then possibly turn everything to lowercase, <clears throat> just in case. So these are the tokens. These tokens are an array of string. Each token could potentially be a color. Oh, we also need to define how we're actually going to move these entities. So suppose I say red, go left, and then it will just move left. Okay, a few open questions, I guess. Tokens for each. Is that what we want? For each token. Um, if token equals color, which we can check based on colors contains, colors contains this key. That means it's a one of the four defined colors. We can then use that to extract the entity with which the color is associated. I think we need some kind of a current entity reference. Um, just make sure it's never null. So this will basically just assign one of the entities to that thing so that this thing is not null. Um, and then this is where we get entities get um, token, because token is the color. And we know this thing contains it because it uses exactly the same name, right? So that should work. Okay, so we've located the entity which we want to control. The next step is to figure out controls. Um, if token is something like left, yeah, we'll just use four directionals. Um, so left, right, up, down. So if token is one of those, which means we need yet another map, possibly, Something like string um, the point two D, which defines the direction directions. Um, so up is zero minus one because it go it goes up, and in bare effects, um, minus one is up, one is down. Then we've got left which is minus one and zero. And then we've got right, which is one zero. We've got our directions and we can actually then easily check if directions contains key token. Then we know it's one of the four directions. So we just use that to then uh, move. Uh, get is a um, token. And then what we get is a point 2D, which we can utilize as a vector um, for the current entity. Current entity gets component, um, projectile component. Set direction. See, so this isn't actually a point, this is a vector. Something like this. Um, okay, let's try this. I'm actually quite excited to see what's, ha uh, what's going to happen. We should probably also have some kind of an indicator that speech recognition thing kicked in. I'm pretty sure I built in some kind of a ready property there that we can use. Okay, red, go left. Now that's actually pretty cool. Um, we have, what colors do we have? Green go down, blue go up. 
No, I said green go down. And then blue go up. That's a bit better. Um, blue left, red right, yellow left, green left. It's not too bad. Because it's going to take all the input as kind of a string and then just pass it at the same time. That's um, doable. Obviously, there will be some other use cases where you'll need to kind of consider how you're going to pass that input string. Um, right. Uh, yellow, up, blue, right, red, down, green, up. Cool. It all works, or at least it seems to work. So as long as you have um, a suitable Chrome or Firefox installation in the default location, because that's where the web API will be looking for, then you should be fine. Um, this is the kind of experimental-ish version of the API. So if you have any feedback or if something goes wrong, then let me know via GitHub discussions. And then we'll go from there. All right, hopefully this is useful. Uh, this is pretty much 100% Java code, well, from the client's perspective. So hopefully this will bring um, some interesting application use cases to um, JVM. Right, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.